sample question. This actually tends to appear in the multiple choice section of the yeah. AP exam. Now, a lot of you would think, oh, I've got to do you know natural log of n over n0, and yeah. it would work. Yeah. But the good news about this one is that we have eight days and we have 32 days for half-lives. Yeah. So if I start with 100 gram sample, I, I like to do it like in a chart. Mm -hmm. This is the mass, and this is the time. So at 100 gram sample, that time would be zero. a day zero, right. right? And then if I go to Eight days. Eight days. That's one half life. One half life. Days. Of course, there will be fifty, 50. grams. And if then I go to uh, sixteen days, I keep adding. That's eight. two half lives. That will be yeah. twenty-five grams. Mm -hmm. And if I then go to twenty-four, there will be half of this again, right. twelve point five lives. grams. You just yeah. keep cutting in half. Mm -hmm. And at thirty-two, there would be half of that would be six and a quarter, right? Yep. There it is. So that's it's four half lives from the original. So you just cut it in half four times. Yeah, you might just say, oh, thirty-two divided by eight. That's four. Um, and then you figure out it's the fourth half-life, one, two, three, four. Watch that. You do have a zero half-life, too, so you don't want right. to get the third one when you should have the right. fourth one. And that will be one of the choices, a guaranteed. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. So watch that. It's tr tricky, but if it's a multiple-choice question with half-lives, just make a little chart, and boom, you're going to have this answer in, well, what, about a minute, probably. Or less. Or less, yeah. Okay, how do we use radioactivity? What's the point? Uh, what, do we use? What, do we, how, what do we use to detect it? Well, do we detect it with a Geiger counter. And that just detects the alpha particles or the beta particles that are coming off of a decomposing Yeah, so uh, we have these devices that can measure uh, reactivity. You might have seen it in the movies. Yeah. And stuff like that. Yeah. Tick, 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 tick. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, there's a number of four th I got four things that, that we use electro uh, we use nuclear stuff for. We use it for old things. Yep. Well, just the example we just did. Yeah, the carbon fourteen dating. Um, yep. You can uh, date an old artifact uh, from you know and say this was you know the wood died. 5,000 years ago or mm -hmm. 2,000 years ago or whatever it might be. Also, there's some medical uses um, uh, for radioactivity. Yep. So um, like uh, radioactive dyes for, like we were talking about earlier, detecting heart blockage. So yeah. when my dad went in to get his heart checked out, they injected him with this dye and then they hooked him up to an x-ray machine and they could see where that dye stopped in his heart. There was some blockage there yeah. and they had to go in now, and But why it would they use radioactivity? Why didn't they? I mean, why 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 do they use that? It sounds kind of dangerous to put radioactive stuff in someone's it body. It does, but it provides contrast between your non-radioactive parts that are in yeah. there. And Actually, then they yeah. use things with really short half-lives too, so it's decomposed and out of your body within a few days. Yeah. One thing also that's that's very cool about uh, radioactive things is they can be te detected in infinitesimally small amounts mm -hmm. with. Uh, Geiger counters. Now, some of those Geiger counters are pointed at somebody's body, essentially. Not exactly a Geiger counter, but basically it's, it's a detector, a of, detector some sort, of some yeah. sort. It can be detected uh, at such, such, such small amounts. So that's something that's very cool about it. And then they can find blockages. When my mom was really sick, she had cancer, and she had, uh, they, they gave her some barium treatments to discover where some blockages were in her intestinal system. Oh, oh I've had that some, before, actually. Oh. I had to drink the barium milkshake. Yeah, the barium milkshake, oh, and they take pictures yeah. as it goes down. An upper and, GI, well, not fun. Unfortunately, they, she had the reverse, the oh, lower GI. Yeah. yeah. Then okay. they put you on a table, so after you've drunk this nasty milkshake, they put you on a table and they rock you around in a bunch of different nasty. orientations. Oh. and and you're, yeah, it's not pleasant. Energy. Energy is interesting, of course. Yeah. Um, uh, this is becoming a bigger issue. I, I just saw that uh, the nuclear energy industry just, uh, and uh, you may be watching this years later, but the nuclear energy industry is hiring tons of people in our down economy yeah. because um, um, a bunch of nuclear power plants are about to come on board so that you yeah. can have uh, power plants. And then lastly, uh, they can be used, sadly, um, for weapons, and they're very, very destructive. Let's talk a little bit about a couple of these. Uh, yeah. Nuclear energy. Basically, you have the nuclear reaction. This is a, a schematic of a nuclear power plant. These yeah. are the things that are being built, a number of these. Mm -hmm. um, we could go into details of... Uh, it's somewhat controversial. But it makes steam. Basically, they take yeah they have this reactor That's the point. and they have the the nuclear chemicals that actually does fission yep. and um, what happens is it heats up a bunch of water the water then pumps through um, goes out here and it pumps through um, another thing so that this this container right here never comes into contact with um, something that goes out in the world right. it then boils water the water turns into steam it then turns a steam turbine and you make electricity. Yep. They then cool that water, send it back. It's just this loop. you got like yep. several loops happening By the way, the exact same process is used in a coal-fired power plant, yes. but the source of the heat in the coal-fired power plant is burning coal. The source of the heat in a nuclear power plant is the nuclear reaction. One thing that's so nice about nuclear power is that you it's can use a very... Well, that's true. <laughs> but it's also you can use a very, very small amount of material right. to get a very large amount of energy. Yeah. So the only problem with nuclear power is you've got a waste product when you're done that you have to do something with. 
but it's very very small amount of waste product. That's and there's true. No uh, greenhouse gas. Exactly. No greenhouse gas. So yeah, from a from a greenhouse standpoint, it's very very clean. So a lot of people really think nuclear power is is a great opportunity or yeah. option for uh, uh, the world's power. Many other countries uh, than the United States use it um, almost exclusively for their. Uh, yeah. See, my brother and my dad are coal miners, so I can't. So you, I, I can't say I like nuclear power because they'll uh, get mad at me. But I actually, I, I think it's a very good. I think it's for a really good idea, actually. <laughs> okay, um, now why do scientists get so excited about all this nuclear stuff? Because well, it's cause, neat. No, it's because it's because it's the last podcast. No, it's because it's lots of energy. Oh, okay. Because if you think about it for a moment, this is actually the in interesting thing about nuclear. This oh, is yeah. what gets them kind of all jazzed up. If you were to take the mass of a proton. This right here is the mass of a proton. Yes, because it's... And this is the mass of a neutron. Yeah. But if you were to look at an oxygen atom and find out the mass of the nucleus of an oxygen atom, it would be eight of these. So let's actually do the math on this, Mr. Sanders. Okay. So if I take eight protons, so eight times 1.6726 times 10 to the minus 27th, Plus two, I'm going to include that last digit in Six, here. two. Yeah, you should do the whole thing. Actually, yeah. I, I did two, six, two, yeah. And then we took eight times 1.67493 times 10 to the minus 27th. And we added those up, we would get what? Mr. Sanders is busily on. typing, trying to figure out how to do this in his computer. Oops, I just screwed something up. Urgh. All right. Put the plus sign in the wrong spot in the parentheses. Ah! <laughs> All right, after much yep. elevation, Sorry Mr. Sam's <laughs> actually added it up. It is what, Mr. 2.67804 times, times 10 to the negative 26th. Now, I'm actually going to go back and double check my work, but I think that looks right. right. Now, this is the mass of eight protons and eight neutrons. But if you actually weigh an atomic, a nucleus of oxygen, guess what you get? 2.65 less instead of 2.67 wait a second I thought if I take two things and I mix them together and I you know like if you and I stood on a scale individually yep and then we stood on the scale together yep we would weigh the same the as sum, ours, the sum yeah, right exactly but the interesting thing is when you take the protons and the neutrons and you add them together they weigh more than the actual nucleus so you, when this atom forms, it loses mass. Mm. In fact, we have a name for that. It is called the mass defect. Everybody right, mass, mass defect. defect. There's a lost amount of mass. That lost amount of mass, we would actually, let's find, what is the lost amount of mass? If you subtract oh, these math. two numbers, 2 6, 7, 8, 7, 0, 4, minus 2.65535. So 2.65535, we get 2.3354 times 10 to the negative 28. So you lose 2.3, whatever, times 10 to the minus 28 kilograms. What happens to that mass? Um, it, it deposits does... itself on my love handles. No. Oh. It is converted to energy. All right. Oops, it's called the mass defect. Yeah. All right. So we have, let's look at our number here. And actually, this utilizes an equation. This is a very famous equation. You might know oh, this. Yes. E equals mc squared. Einstein's important equation. So it's actually, as a side note, it's not actually E equals mc squared. It's E equals delta mc squared, the change in the mass. Oh. Our change in mass was 2. Point what? Uh, I don't remember. 2.33 times 10 to the minus 28th, by the way, the M does have to be in kilograms, yep. times C is the speed of light, which is 3.0, times 10 to the 8th meters per second. But you not only do you take that number, which is a big square. fast number, but you square it and you get how many? You get 2.10 times 10 to the negative 11th joules. I believe it's joules, yeah? Yeah, that's joules. That's now, joules per, per atom. atom. So if we were to have a mole of those atoms, you would times this by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd yep. atoms in a mole. And you get 1.27 times 10 to the 13th joules. That's joules, and if we divide that by 1,000. Uh, 1.26 or 1.27 times 10 to the, or times 10 to the 10th. 
and that's kilojoules. kilojoules. Now, the reason that's I do mole. this, uh, that's per oxygen. mole. If you were to burn methane, this is natural gas mm -hmm. that we get out of the ground, it's 882 kilojoules per mole. How much more would you get out of this? Take this number, Mr. Sams, okay. and divide it by 882. I think it's about a million. 882, it's uh, 1.4 1, million. 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, it's 14 million. 14 million. Now what I want to say is that if I had one mole of oxygen that I could uh, smoosh together using nuclear chemistry, and I had one mole of methane, I would get 14 million times more energy out of the nuclear stuff per mole. Wow. That's a lot. So if you think of your coal mining family, no offense, but if I had a ton of coal, uh -huh. 2,000 pounds of coal, I would need 14 million times less nuclear stuff to get the same amount of energy. Yep. So take a ton, divide it by 14 million, and you've got just a itsy-bitsy little piece.